ever since Hawks lost his wings from being burned by Dobby, he was completely broken. He was raised to be a hero for his entire life, and to have that thing stripped away from him, Hawks completely lost his identity. Hawks was constantly tortured by nightmares of the day he had to kill twice, and society wouldn't let him forget it. They would often brand him as a murderer and say things like, the apple doesn't fall far from the- Seeing Hawks all broken down like that was absolute torture to you. You really wanted to get him on his feet again, but you had no idea how to do that because you were just a normal civilian who worked an everyday 9 to 5 job. Whenever you go to work, you are always worrying about Hawks because Hawks has tried to take his life multiple times. And so whenever you go off to work, you had to hide everything sharp, lock all the medicine, Hawks knows that he can't keep worrying you like this. He loves you more than anything, and that's really the only thing left of his identity. But it's really hard for him to change because he's constantly haunted by nightmares. So at night, when you guys are sleeping, you would always have to cuddle him, to soothe him, rub his back, sing him a lullaby. So the two of you are just watching TV on the couch in the weekend and you're rubbing his scars, placing soothing kisses all over his face and body and telling him everything's gonna be okay. And it's moments like these that makes Hawks feel truly alive again. Like he can forget that he was once a hero and forget everything that's going on in the world and just be with you. But you knew that you had to get him on his feet again. You had to get him out there, let him do something, and really just let him find a purpose in life again. Because only a little bit before the battle with the villains, you were diagnosed with this incurable disease. You only had months to live, and the only thing that worried you was Hawks, because you were worried that once you were gone, he would stop living too. Ever since the battle with the villains, there has been a lack of heroes because of how many died and how many were injured to the point where they couldn't continue to your activities. But the Hero Commission needed heroes, so they needed the older heroes, the ones who couldn't continue their hero activity, to become mentor figures or managers or guides for the newer heroes. Once you learned about that, you told Hawks that this was an opportunity that he should take. However, Hawks was very scared. He was scared of how the society thinks of him, he was scared of how this fellow hero thinks of him, and he was just scared of being used by the Hero Commission again. Baby Bird, I can't do this. No one will accept me. I'm a murderer, Hawks would always tell you. No. That's not true. You did your best for us, and whatever you had to do, you did it for the greater good. I know it. The heroes know it. And eventually everyone will know it. Hawks placed his arms around you and buried his head into your shoulders, crying and just whimpering and continuing to doubt himself. He rubbed his back, he kissed his face, whispered soft encouragement into his ear, and did everything you can to get a little bit of confidence in him. Baby, he said, you're much more than you think you are. You are a hero, Hawks. No matter what you had to do, you are a hero to the society, and you saved countless people. With or without your quirk, you are still the hero, Hawks. And right now, we need you. Society needs you. The young heroes, they need you. There was still a little bit of doubt inside Hawks, but he didn't want to let you down. He's never let you down before, and he doesn't plan on doing that in the future either. Hawks smiled softly at you and placed a gentle kiss on your lips. Thank you, baby bird, he told you. Thank you for always being there for me. I love you so much, and I want to be with you forever. You kissed him back on the lips and told him, Of course, I'll always be with you. 
but deep down inside you know that you didn't have much time left. You accompanied Hawks to the agency he will now be working at. At first, Hawks thought the young heroes there wouldn't accept him, but he was wrong. All the young heroes there looked up to him and they knew all the things that he did and why he did it. Hawks had a great time hanging out with the younger heroes, teaching them important tips and training them, helping them out, answering questions. He just felt important again. The only real problem was the way to the agency and the way back, because if civilians see Hawks, they would immediately point him out. So every time Hawks could finally get his mind off of the traumatic events, he would always be reminded again. You knew that there was really only one thing left for you to do, and that was to undo Dobby's lie. Dobby used video editing to show only part of the story, purposely misleading the masses into thinking Hawks was just a murderer who killed a man who was begging for mercy. Of course, even if Hawks were to speak out right now, nobody would believe him because everyone lost faith in the heroes. However, you possessed a quirk that would easily undo all of that. Your quirk was called memory projection. Your eyes worked as projectors, and by touching a person, you could easily project their memory onto any surface you were looking at right now. Because of how your quirk could easily invade other people's privacy, you always lived as quirkless, and not even Hawks knew that you had a quirk. Time was running out for you, so you had to get to work fast. The good thing was, Hawks has been improving day by day. Training and hanging out with the younger heroes really helped Hawks regain his confidence, and knowing that there were people out there who trusted him, he had a lot of hope and positivity for the future. When he came home one day, he was ready to tell you all the good things that happened. When he walked into the house, he heard you coughing, and when he went to the bedroom, he asked, Baby Bird, are you okay? You quickly wiped your mouth and hid your hand behind your back as you turned around. I'm fine, Kago, you told him. Just choked on my spit a little. Oh, okay. Do you want me to make dinner? He asked. Yeah, that sounds great, you replied. Before you walked out of the room, you wiped the blood off your hand with the tissue and threw it away in the trash. During dinner, Hawks kept telling you about the heroes he has been working with, just boasting about them and just telling you how proud he is of them, and he, whenever he talks about them, he has a big smile on his face. Seeing him all happy and smiling again, you knew that that's where he belonged. He belonged with the heroes, doing hero work. That's who he is. After dinner, you made his favorite drink and you secretly put some sleeping pills in it. You invited him to watch a movie with you and the two of you just cuddled on the couch. Soon, he fell asleep in your arms. While he was sleeping, you secretly extracted his memory and projected it onto the wall. You recorded it with the camera and you were able to see for yourself everything he went through. You really wanted to cry, but you knew you couldn't because if you cried, then the projection would get all blurry and you couldn't afford that. So you just had to control your own feelings and sit through it all. After you got to the point where Hawks killed twice, you couldn't do it anymore and you broke down in tears. You stopped the recording and you just hugged him and cried and cried and cried. When you extract the memory of someone, you can actually feel the emotion that they were going through during the time of the memory, and you could feel every single bit of emotion that Hawks was feeling during the time. You knew just how hard it was for him to put that blade in that man, and it tore him apart, and it tore you apart. All you could do was just hug him and cry as silently as possible. Fox woke up in the morning laying on the couch with you in his arms, seeing you there put a big smile on his face. Everything seemed to be getting better, and Hawks felt like it was because you were there. If you hadn't been there for him when he was at his lowest, he probably wouldn't be here right now. Hawks placed a gentle kiss on your forehead, but he noticed something wrong. You were sweating a lot, and you looked like you were in pain. Your eyes were all puffy, and he didn't know why. Hey, kid, 
he called as he tried to wake you up. What's wrong with you? Your eyes fluttered open to his voice, and you let out a soft groan in discomfort. You quickly tried to play it off and told him you were probably just nearing your period. He wanted to take you to the hospital, but you told him it was nothing serious. You took painkillers as you normally would for your period, and you walked him to work. Cox waved you goodbye as he walked into the agency. He stopped and turned around, and he saw you smiling back at him, and he told you, Kid, I'm gonna get better. I'll get better. And when I do, let's get married. You felt tears build up in your eye sockets, and you forced yourself to smile back at him. Yes, you said. Yes, let's get married. Hawks immediately ran over to you and picked you up. He spun you around in circles as he laughed. We're gonna get married. We're gonna get married. He laughed as you told him to put you down. After he placed you back on the ground, the two of you shared a long, tender kiss. Then you told him to go into the agency before anyone sees him. Wait for me, kid, he told you as he placed a kiss on your hand. Hurry up and go to work, hero. You're gonna be late, you laughed as you nudged him. After Hawks went into the agency, your smile slowly faded. Suddenly, you burst out coughing. You were coughing so violently that you fell to your knees. You had your hands over your mouth and there was just so much pain in your chest that it was unbearable. Blood gushed out of your mouth and pooled over your hands. When you saw the red liquid and smelled the iron, you immediately realized that you were in worse shape than you thought. Kago. Oh, Kago. You sobbed as you knelt on the ground. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Hawks was at work that day, and he was having a lot of fun. Koyami was also a hero there at that agency, and having his old intern there really put Hawks at ease. As he and Tokoyami were training, suddenly one of the younger heroes broke in and said, Hey, you guys gotta check the news. When Hawks and Tokoyami ran to the television, his heart nearly stopped. He saw Dobby on the screen, and he didn't know what Dobby was going to say. And then he realized that this was just an old clip of what he broadcast before. The video clip of Twice calling out for help played on the screen, and Hawks was reminded again of the trauma of that day. But suddenly the clip paused, and then the screen changed. Hawks' eyes widened when he recognized the person on screen. It was you. What you just saw was an edited clip, purposely rearranged and put into the false order. The clip I will show you right now is the correct order of events. And then what Hawks saw was as if he were reliving that day all over again. Not even in his own dreams could he replicate the details of that memory. After the scene where Hawks killed twice, Hawks saw the board of the Hero Commission on the screen. It was another one of his memories. The Hero Commission ordered Hawks to infiltrate the League of Villains. They told him to do whatever it takes to ensure the victory of the heroes, and to take out whoever posed a threat. After a series of clips, the screen went back to you. You were sitting on a chair similar to how Dobby was when he was broadcasting his message. Just like how I'm asking you not to believe in Dobby, you may not believe in me. But these memories are extracted straight out from Hawks' mind. You then went on to explain how your quirk worked. In the end, you left a message. You may not believe in me, but I beg of you, please believe in the heroes. They only want the best for society, and they're only human. When given a choice where you can only save one of the two, one being a friend, one being an enemy, I'm sure the choice is obvious. When all your friends' lives are on the line, it is impossible to make the right choice. I'm not telling you to forgive the Hero Commission and Hawks for doing what they did, but I'm asking you to please understand what they did. You then went to explain how Hawks has already been relieved of his duties, and you begged the masses not to make things hard for the next generation of heroes. As Hawks was watching the broadcast, he suddenly felt a vibration in his pocket, 
He took out his phone and realized it was a text from you. I'm sorry for taking your memory without your permission, Keiko. It won't happen again. I promise. It read. There was a strange gut feeling in Hawks. It made him anxious. It made him scared. Why does he feel like there's more to your text than just an apology? Also, since when did you have a quirk? Why didn't you ever tell him? This was all so new to him and he was so confused. He texted you back asking, Baby bird, what's all of this about? It was a dumb question really, but his mind was everywhere. Then he looked up to see the you on the television, where you were thanking everyone for their attention and apologizing for hacking into the national television. Finally, you said, Goodbye. Hawks' eyes widened when he saw the soft smile on your face. Why does it look so forced? Why do your eyes look in pain? And the gut feeling, why is it getting worse? That's when Hawks realized goodbye was meant for him. He immediately ran out of the agency, calling you on the phone, only to hit the voicemail over and over again. Come on, baby bird, pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. Pick up the damn phone. Hawks wished he still had his wings, that he could still fly. Running was just so slow, and he didn't know how people could get by without wings. Hawks kept running back to the apartment. He didn't care that there were civilians pointing him out, people calling his name. He didn't care for any of that. None of that went into his ears. All he was thinking about was you. Hawks slammed the apartment door open. Kid, he called. Kid, are you home? Baby bird, where are you? The apartment was empty. Before Hawks could call out your name, he got a call from Tokoyami. Tokoyami told him that the police were now looking for you, and they were going to charge you for hacking. That fucking ridiculous, Hawks screamed into the phone before he hung up. He looked all over the place in the apartment, calling out your name and begging you to come out, and he searched for your stuff and found out all your essentials were gone. Hawks found a note laying on your work desk, addressed to him. You apologized to him, and you told him you'd be out for a while, you didn't want to get arrested, and you told him not to wait for you. His first instinct was to crumble the note, and then he called you. His call went directly to the voicemail, but he called you again, and again, and again. He begged you to pick up. He sat on the bed with his hand running through his hair, grabbing a fistful of it. He was so frustrated. How could you just do all of that and suddenly just disappear? Hawks cursed. He shouted curses in the room, not caring that he was disrupting the neighbors. He usually speaks in really formal language, but when he curses, he reverts back to his hometown dialect. He was so mad that he started smashing things. Hawks swiped everything off your work desk, letting them crash to the ground. He screamed your name and grabbed his hair. He had so many things to ask you, so many things he wanted to say to you, but he just wanted to see you. Out of frustration, he kicked the medicine cabinet. Everything came crashing to the ground, and the originally locked cabinet broke open. He didn't care about the mess in the room. He squatted on the ground, held his head with his hands, and just groaned in frustration. After a while, he calmed down, and he remembered that you said that you were just gonna be out for a while. So, that means you'll come back, right? When you come back, and you see all this mess in the room, surely you'll be mad at him. I have to clean up, he thought. However, when he started cleaning up the mess on the ground, his eyes caught onto the medicine that had fallen out of the cabinet. Most of the medicine on the ground were over the counter. Tylenol, sleeping pills, and just normal bandages. But what caught his eyes were the ones that were obviously prescription medicine. The medicine weren't his, so they had to be yours. They had weird names, and he didn't really understand what they were for. 
Then he remembered, over the past few months, he had been coughing a lot, and acting really strange, sweating a lot, being in pain, sometimes getting weird stomach aches and headaches. His sixth sense was acting up again. There was a voice telling him that something was wrong. Something was very wrong. Hawks grabbed all the prescription medicine from the ground. He searched them up one by one on his smartphone. To his surprise, most of them were painkillers. But why would you be prescribed painkillers? He had a feeling that there was more to you leaving than the broadcast today, so he decided to look around the house. You didn't leave much in the house. You were very thorough and you left practically nothing to give him any clue to where you were going. After searching for hours to find basically nothing, Hawks was once again in a slump and he was frustrated, angry, and a cursing mess again. He ran out of the house and he called Tokoyami and everyone else in his contact to help look for you. He didn't have many friends, but there were many heroes in the same situation as him, and after what you did for them on the broadcast, many of them were eager to help find you. However, it was as if you had just disappeared from the face of Earth. Nobody could find you. Hawks looked everywhere, and he was starting to panic. He was worried sick about you, and Mirko was there to comfort him. She told him that they'll definitely find you. However, they didn't. For some reason, nobody could find you. Hawks was going crazy. The good thing was, there were a lot of heroes, former heroes, all there for him, helping him and encouraging him, keeping his hopes up. About a month or so passed, and he finally got a message from another hero who said, they think they found you. The address they gave Hawks was in a really rural countryside, a small hospital. When Hawks got the message, he immediately took off to find you. He was so worried, countless questions going in his mind. Just, why are you in the hospital? Are you sick? How long have you been sick? The hospital you are at now was really far from where you originally lived. Hawks had to take a train and took a bus and switched to another bus and then he had to walk miles in order to get to there. When Hawks arrived, he went to the front desk and asked for you. Then footsteps echoed in the hall and got louder and louder and stopped right before him. He looked to his side to see a man in a white lab coat and to his surprise, the man looked just like you. Kid? He asked, confused. The man in front of him smiled gently and said, Hawks, I've been waiting for you. Turns out, that man was your cousin and your doctor. Hawks told him that he didn't know you had a cousin. The man just chuckled softly and said, There's a lot of things that you don't know. Hawks's brows furrowed as he told your cousin that he wanted to see you. Your cousin's smile slowly faded his eyes narrowing at Hawks sadly, not knowing what to say. You had begged him not to tell Hawks, not to tell anyone, to just hide you away until you die. Your cousin wanted to honor that promise with you, but at the same time, he knew how much you missed the man. There was a lump in his throat as he slowly choked out, follow me. The hospital wasn't big, and the hallway was really small, and the walk wasn't actually that far, but it felt like forever. Hawks and your cousin stopped in front of your room. Hawks wanted to open that door and see you immediately, but your cousin stopped him and told him, there's a few things that you need to know. Your cousin told Hawks about your disease and how long you've had it. You've had it for about half a year now, and now, you barely had a month to live. Hawks couldn't believe his ears. He was frozen on the spot. Half a year? Half a year you've had this incurable disease and you've never said a thing to him. His blood boiled. He was enraged. Not just at you. 
but at himself. How could he not have noticed? All the signs that he failed to notice, the weird sweat, the coughing, and even the constant period pains that you would have. Now that he thought about it, those signs were so obvious, and yet he was so caught up in his own self-pity that he failed to notice how much pain you were in. I'm a fucking idiot, he thought to him. Hawks slid the door open, and he found you on the hospital bed. He wanted to scream at you, to shout your name, and demand why you never told him. But he found out that you were actually asleep. Your cousin told him that you were in so much pain that the only way to help relieve the pain was to put you to sleep. So you spent most of the day sleeping. Hawks walked over to you, and he found you holding a three-foot plushie of him that he banned you from holding because when you guys were at home together, he told you that you didn't need a plushie when you had the real thing. He didn't even realize that the plushie was missing after you left. He never cared about it, but he didn't know that that plushie was one of your most prized possessions. You took it wherever you went, and it was the only thing to comfort you when he was gone during his hero work. Hawk sat himself down next to you. He placed your hand in his and kissed your hand. Oh, baby bird, why didn't you tell me? Baby bird, please, don't do this to me. Your brows twitched a little and your eyes fluttered open. You gazed at him and blinked a few times, wondering if you were still dreaming. Keiko? He asked. Hey kid, he greeted. For some reason, you weren't surprised at all that he found you. In fact, you kind of expected him. Are you here to arrest me? You asked. <laughs> Keigo burst out laughing. He hated. He hated how even at times like this, you can still make him laugh. That you are the only one in the world who can make him laugh like this. No, baby bird. I'm not here to arrest you he told you. Plus, it's not like Hira's had the authority to arrest people anyways. He decided to swallow all of his questions. None of them were important anymore. He held your hand and looked you in the eyes and just enjoyed the moment of you and him. If you only had days left, he didn't want to spend those days arguing with you. So he told you, scoot over and he crawled into the bed with you and placed his arms around your shoulders and held you close to his chest. Hawks couldn't believe that during the whole time that he was wallowing up in self-pity, you were fighting the fear of death. And what was worse was you had to fight it alone. He couldn't help you at all. Instead, you had to help him during the entire time when you needed the help the most. I'm sorry, kid. I'm so, so sorry. He kept mumbling into your ear. Me too, Keigo, you said. I'm sorry for hiding this from you. He noticed how hard it was for you to talk and how your breath was really weak. His teeth clenched and his hands were balled into fists. It hurt him so much to see you in such a weak state. If only it were him, he would do anything, anything to be in your place right now, to trade his life for yours. Please, God, if you're going to take someone's life, take mine. Please take mine. Don't take my baby birds. He didn't believe in God, but he prayed. He desperately prayed. You wrapped your arms around Hawks' waist as you normally would when you guys cuddled. You hadn't seen him for a month, and you really, really missed him. Originally, you planned to die alone without him knowing, but the past month without him has been horrendous for you. There wasn't a minute spent not thinking about him. Was he eating right? Is he going to work? You knew disappearing like that was unfair to him, but you didn't want him to know about you and your sickness. But now that he's here, now that he knows, none of it matters anymore. All you want to do is spend the rest of your time in his arms. Keigo, 
I love you so much. You said weakly as you buried your face in his chest. Hawks kissed you on the forehead. I know, baby bird. I know. I love you too. The medicine in your system was still taking effect and you fell asleep in his arms. You woke up to a strong pain in your chest and you sat right up coughing. Blood came gushing out of your mouth and spilling all over you and the blanket. Kid, oh my god, are you okay? What's going on? Fox has never been that scared before. At that moment, tears came streaming out of his eyes as he called for help. Your cousin and the nurses came rushing in and they told him to get off the bed as they hooked you up to the machines. Hawks felt utterly useless. All he could do was watch you be in pain and there was nothing he could do. Is she gonna be okay? Is she gonna be okay? He kept asking your cousin. <coughs> I'm fine, Kago. I'm fine. But both you and your cousin knew that that wasn't true. You were dying, and your life was hanging on a thread. The nurse laid you down, and the heart rate monitor echoed the beating of your heart. Hawks grabbed your bloody hand in his, and he begged you to be okay. No, 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 baby bird, promise me you'll stay. Promise. Don't go. Please, I can't live without you, baby bird. Please be okay. Please be okay. Hawk squeezed your hand as tears streamed down his face. He continued to beg you to stay. You smiled at him, and you said, You'll be fine, Keiko. Even without me, you'll be fine. No, no, I won't be fine. I won't be fine, baby bird. Please don't go. You promised me. You said we were gonna get married. Your cousin tried to put an oxygen mask on you, but you pushed him away. Kiss me, Kigo. Kiss me right now. Hawks leaned down obediently and placed his lips gently on yours. He was so scared to use too much force, so you used the last bit of your string to pull him closer and deepen the kiss. His tears trickled down onto your face and then slowly to the pillow. A little bit later, he pulled apart. I love you, Keigo. Promise me, you'll be strong. Hawks shook his head. No, 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 baby bird, please don't. No, please. I just found you. We were gonna get married. Please don't go. Please don't go. Your eyes softened at him as you slowly brushed away his tears with your fingers. You cupped your hand around his cheek, and he held his hand over yours. I'm sorry, Keigo. In the next life, I promise, I'll be healthy. No! I want you to be healthy now! I want to be with you now! You chuckled softly at him. <laughs> Silly bird, I am with you. I'll always be with you. Hawks wanted to curse. Why? Why is it so unfair? Why is God so unfair to you? I... I can't live without you, baby bird. Hawks sobbed into your hand. Keiko, look up, you told him. Hawks lifted his head, and his eyes widened when he saw the projection on the ceiling. Hawks saw himself on the ceiling. The Hawks in the projection was still just a teenager, and he was smiling so brightly, so cheekily. It was the moment when the two of you first met. Then he saw himself again in his high school uniform. He was soaked. It was that day in the rain when he first confessed to you. His face was flushed red as his arms were on either side of you. Hawk smiled at the memory as he remembered that he pinned you to the wall that day and told you to be his baby bird. The next memory was him knocking on your window in the middle of night when he returned from his hero work. He had a big smile on his face and the first thing he did when he saw you was hug you. You projected all of your treasured memories with him onto the ceiling as you felt your life slowly slip away. In all of your memory, Hawks was smiling. 
that was the Hawks you loved. The confident, funny, flirty, romantic, winged hero. Finally, he saw himself without his wings, scarred, but still smiling. He was with the young heroes in the agency, training with them. That was the person you wanted him to be. You wanted him to continue the work he loved, continue smiling, continue creating the world where heroes could laze around doing nothing but complain. Hawk squeezed your hand as the memories ended. He looked back down at you, and you smiled at him. This is goodbye, Keigo. Don't come looking for me so soon, okay? I want some long time. Okay. Hawks choked out. Your eyes slowly began to close, and Hawks could feel the hand you kept on his cheek was slowly losing strength. He squeezed your hand to keep it in place as he called your name. I love you, baby bird. I love you. I love you. Ah, uh, you thought. This isn't such a bad way to die. are present at your funeral. They were there to thank you for what you did for them, and there to comfort Hawks for his loss. Hawks promised you that he would stay strong, so that's what he did. Even after your death, he continued to work with young heroes. He became a teacher at UA and started to raise the younger generation of heroes. Every day after work, Hawks would pick up your picture and talk to you about his day. He would tell you how proud he is of his students, and the direction society is going in. He said, it's all thanks to you. At night, when he slept, he would take your favorite hoodie and hug it close to his chest, imagining that it's you. Days to month, month to years, a 20-year-old to a 40-year-old, to a 60-year-old, to an 80-year-old. Now, Hawks was at the age of 90 has been retired for years now. He never married, doesn't have any children. The only people who come to visit him are his old students. He sat on the couch holding a picture of you. He carefully caressed the picture with his thumb, smiling gently at your face. I'm all old and wrinkly now, but you're still so pretty. When I go find you, will you still recognize me? I've waited long enough. It's okay if I go find you now, right? He held the picture close to his chest, humming the soft lullaby you would used to always sing to him. And he slowly fell asleep. When Hawks woke up, he found himself in a meadow of flowers. He looked around, not recognizing the place. And then he looked down at his hand. Where were all his wrinkles? Whoa, what the heck? He gasped as his wings flapped in surprise. Wait, wings? On his back was the pair of strong crimson wings he was so proud of. What's going on? Where am I? He thought. Fox trudged through the meadow, wondering where he was. The view was beautiful. Where was this place? He's never been here before. Yet... Why does it feel so familiar? Suddenly, he saw a figure sitting in the middle of the meadow picking flowers. His eyes widened. But that's... That's you! With one flap of his wings, he soared up into the sky and glided straight through the sea of flowers. He stopped in front of the figure. The gust of wind scattered the flowers into the sky and then letting them slowly fall like rain. Baby bird, it's you. It's really you. I know I said not to come find me so quick, but you sure took your time. You chuckled. Hawks laughed as he knelt down and placed his arms around you. Sorry, baby bird. Did I make you wait? It's okay. You said, I actually had a lot of fun. In fact, I'm actually kind of bummed that you're here to disturb my peace and quiet. 
Fox frowned as he pinched her nose. You did not just say that. You giggled cheekily as you placed your arms around his neck. <laughs> well, you're here anyway, so I might as well enjoy your company. Hawks cupped your cheek with one hand, and the other snaked around your waist. He crashed his lips onto yours and kissed you hungrily. Finally, he said as he broke the kiss. Finally, we can be together again. You smiled at him and said, I hope you brought the ring. Hawks' eyes widened, and then he shuffled around in his pocket. He smiled when he felt the small box inside. He took the box out and opened the lid, revealing the beautiful ruby ring. I've had this for a while, he said. I told myself that I would take it with me when I was ready to come find you. Well, what are you waiting for? You asked as you held out your left hand. Hawks slid the ring onto your ring finger. He smiled and caressed the ring with his thumb. Skipping the vows, the two of you pulled in and shared a long, tender kiss.